The 6.5 is on the road here in Las Vegas, Nevada for Dell Technologies World 2025. Dan, it's infrastructure, it's software, it's services from client to the data center and everything in between. And there's that little pesky thing called AI. <laughs> and it's been in every part of it, injected, included, it's in, it's on, it's around, and it's for the customers, which has been a big focus here at Dell Technologies World 2025. It is good, you know, we've kind of kept pretty high level about the infrastructure out there, but it was great on stage today, right? Michael dove in, he's talking about giant rack servers with Grace Blackwell, with AMD, with Intel, pretty much all the above. And I'm glad we're going to get into this. And here we have Armando from Dell to go and let's geek out. Yes. Welcome to the 6.5. Thank you for having me. Uh, it's, it's a pleasure to be on stage with you. I've seen you a lot, so it's great to finally be here. <laughs> yeah, it's great to have you here with us. And by the way, I'm not going to just gloss over hearing your voice crack. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations, yes, I'm going Pat. to puberty. It's a big uh, moment yes. for you. Um, yes. It has been a long day. We've been with you most of the day. I think this is our ninth or tenth conversation, all of which have been great. And Armando, excited to have this one with you. Thank you. Um, you know, you're really involved in product planning across the board. Uh, you're looking at you know a number of servers that you, you know you own. You're responsible for. We're seeing a lot of new stuff rolling out. Kind of curious. You know, you're the one that really one of the people at Dell that's really helping sort of understand demand, drive demand. Uh, we know that your part of the business is growing really fast. What are you hearing from the the customers? Uh, it's really interesting time in AI, right? Uh, I think right now when you look at AI. Um, you know, it's much more further along than it was five years ago. Uh, you know, the models are better, uh, infrastructure is better. Uh, but really what we're trying to do at Dell is really always, you know, our customers are always going to be our guiding light. We want to listen to them, learn, and really just bring the products to market that they want to have. Uh, but what's interesting is, you know, not all customers are created equal and not all data centers are created equal. So really what we try to focus on is trying to meet our customers wherever they're at in the AI journey. Right. And as you know, one size doesn't fit all. So the beautiful thing about DTW is that I get to be here for three days and I get to talk to 40 different customers and really understand their needs, you know, from, hey, how much power per rack can you bring, right? Essentially, you know, what type of AI use case do you want, right? Everybody, the rage is large language models, right? Everybody wants to do LLM with 20 billion, 30 billion, 40 billion parameters, but that's not the only AI use case out there, right? There's still image recognition, those types of use cases, healthcare use cases. So we really try to make sure that we essentially have a product for all those different use cases. Yeah, and that's a challenge. I mean, we just had a discussion with the SMB group uh, a couple uh, conversations ago, and the difference between what they want and a hyperscaler are, are very different. And then you have the enterprise, right? We needed a brand new GPU uh, from NVIDIA announced today right. or last <laughs> night to be able to fit the cooling, reliability, and software compatibility that they're looking for for inference. But a lot of different trends going on, a lot of pressure and, and feedback. Are there some that are driving change bigger than the others? Yeah, I, I mean, when you look at the market, you do see this bifurcation, right? So you have your tier one CSPs, you know, they're going to yeah. be a certain animal, they're going to want certain things. But really what we're trying to focus on is enterprise and commercial, and really what we want to do is lower the barrier of entry, right? Yes. Um, you, know, you know, we talk about, hey, you have GB200 and you can have 72 GPUs talking to each other, which is amazing, and we have a customer set for that, but when you look at our enterprise and commercial customers, they're really not there yet, right? Right. And so what we want to be able to do is come to them with a point of view to say, hey, where are you in your AI journey? Where are you starting from? And then essentially, let's meet you there, right? So for example, you know, we just announced our AI PCs. You know this, a data scientist doesn't start just running a model in the data center, right? They have ideation phase, right? They want to do a little bit of data, you know, munging, you know, data cleansing. Yes. They run a small model. And then once they see some value right there, hey, they get a little bit bigger. Maybe they want to run it on one server, right? Hey, once it gets a little bit bigger from there, more data, hey, they see more value. Hey, let's run it on five servers. Hey, maybe let's start with the PCIe GPU first, right? That might be good enough. Maybe then let's go to something like NVLink or something that AMD has where the GPUs can communicate right. with each other. And then eventually, hey, we want everybody to run hundreds or thousands of racks at a time, but you know, it takes you time to get there. And so for us, enterprise commercial, lower barrier of entry, come into a point of view. And then not only that, you know, you have that build versus buy spectrum. Sure. And with the enterprise commercial customers, you really see them to where they, hey, 
I want you to come with a point of view, but not only that, solve all the hard problems for me, right? Make sure all the open ecosystem tools are there so that I can develop my use case, right? Hey, make sure I have the right server building block, right? Make sure I have the network building block, make sure I have the right storage, and then, hey, I layer the software on top of it and make sure that I'm, you know, I'm gonna be able to execute that use case. Because here's the deal, like I, I talk to a lot of customers and say, hey, I wanna have 20 use cases in, in, in production next year, and I'm gonna say, hey, let's start with one. Right. Let's get that first one right, let's knock a home run, and then, hey, we can get to the next one. So that's really what we're trying to come in is really with a point of view, uh, a guided you know, view of where you need to get to. And then not only that, let's help you define the use case and then let's help you execute that use yeah, case. That's a much more mature conversation above the box yes. that uh, I think is, is refreshing for Dell to have. And in the end, they're looking for an advisor uh, for their business. And not all people show up on the doorstep. Uh, a lot of people show up on the doorstep with a, a generic server, but value around that is not always there. Exactly. Yeah. We've entered the era of uh, all companies are tech companies. We sort of said that over the last decade of digital transformation, but in reality, now every company that's kind of going through this process of, they're doing product management. They're basically looking at, this is how a process used to work. We want to develop a new product, product a new service that our customers can consume, they get the benefit of AI. I mean, I was thinking a lot about this XE partnership with NVIDIA, kind of the Blackwell footprint, but it's, it's small. It's whether it's the footprint of a, the, you know, the desktop devices on the, on, the, on the client side, and then of course now you're building these servers that are really inference and tuning. You know, like, yeah, yeah. hey, um, you, know, you may have a, a small rack and you've got a lot of data on-prem. You want to do a certain amount of the AI here. You want to you know, get the AI, the, the infrastructure close. Edge cases, small data center use cases. And it seems like, um, XE is kind of perfectly designed to help start that journey for companies that you know are going to evolve to be doing probably a hybrid because enterprises do hybrid. I mean, they exactly. just do. Yeah. It's not all on prem. It's not all in the cloud. I mean, so how are you sort of telling that journey of XE being like kind of the get it started for AI and the enterprise? Well, one of the biggest things we focus on at XE is really how do we make sure it's the best building block for AI, right? And the other big thing we try to do is offer flexibility and choice. Um, you know, when you look at, you know, uh, you know, GPUs, you know, we have NVIDIA, which is a market leader, but we also have interest in AMD GPUs. Yes. Uh, we know we we're just talking about Intel Gaudi, you know, that those opportunities. So really what we're trying to do is address that silicon diversity, give our customers flexibility and choice on which, you know, uh, silicon they, they want to, you know, use. And then not only that, we test and certify these building blocks, right? We have strong partnerships with Intel, AMD, and NVIDIA. And not only that, we do test and certification to make sure that that is the right building block. We do benchmarking. We talked about benchmarking right. earlier, right? Hey, how, how, how well can you train a llama model on this? How fast you can you expect, right? Not only that, we go into the details of, okay, hey, how many data scientists do you have? How many concurrent users do you have? How far do you want to scale? Right. How big is your data? And so when you have those types of conversations, we want to make sure we have the right building block for every one of those. And it's not just, hey, here's a server with a bunch of GPUs, here you go, have at it. We really want to be able to show them, hey, here's your right building block, and if this is the way you want to scale, here's the path you take, all right? If you want to do GB200, here's the path you take. If you want to do a PCIe version, here's the path you take. And so that's what we're really trying to do with XE. Do we all want everybody that's here once? Yeah, we want to get you there, but we know that it takes time, yeah. and so you just can't start there, so we want to give you the right building blocks. So one of the biggest challenges uh, of late that we found with AI infrastructure is the amount of power draw and the ability to cool it. And um, you're looking at a, a, a 6X increase in power per rack uh, going from H series to uh, Grace Blackwell, and it could be 10X of H200 to the next generation uh, on that. And uh, we're looking at um, uh, chilled water or special non-chilled water. Right. Uh, I know you just made an announcement today on that, but how are you approaching what looks like increased power draw up and to the right and uh, what was looked at 10 years ago was exotic, right. that nobody wanted to touch, particularly in the enterprise, only high performance computing was even using water cooling. Right. Um, I mean, it, it's an interesting, right? You know, there's, there's a large spectrum, uh, but really what we try to do is 
we're going to still continue to do air cooled systems. We're going to still can you do 19 inch form factor? Yeah, everybody wants DLC, the 21 inch form factor, <laughs> the OVR3 rack. You know those good things. But for us, we're we're focused on both air cooled and liquid cooled, right? Uh, the biggest thing that we really try to do is, you know, for example, in Europe, um, you know, some places in Europe they can only bring 15 kilowatts per rack. You yes. Know? Uh, they're landlocked. They can't go up. You know, uh, if you look, no Europe. Uh, you know, the buildings are very, very old, right? And so, what we try to do is really understand the customer's need, right? Um, you know, we talked about the enclosed rear door heat exchanger today. You know, there's some big news around that. When you look at that type of news, really, what we're trying to do, because if you look at GB200 and full, running a full rack of that, that's 136 kilowatts. Per yes. Rack. All right. Not everybody has 136 kilowatts. But with this enclosed rear door heat exchanger, we're actually able to up your density by 20%. And hey, you can run it in an 80 kilowatt rack versus okay. a 136 kilowatt rack, right? And then when you look at the innovation, you know, rear door heat exchangers, we talked about HPC, they've been around for a long time, exactly. right? But what we did is, hey, we enclosed it so that when you're blowing that hot air, you're not blowing it on to the next row of servers, yes. right? With that heat exchanger and that closure, we're reusing that hot air and we're refilling it and we're making sure that it's into your capsuling that and that's how you get that, you know, efficiencies of scale and scope. Uh, you know, we have stuff like liquid assisted cooling, those types of things as well that we're, we're looking at. So it's, it's, it's an interesting time. Uh, but like I said, we're going to do both. You know, we want to do air cooled. We want to do direct liquid cooling because there's going to be a need for both. And I do really see enterprise and commercials cu customers sticking with air cooling as long as possible, right? Because that's how their data centers sure. are built. Eventually, there's going to be that tipping point where you go to direct liquid cooling. But we want to make sure that, you know, we, we meet those customers halfway and say, hey, all you can do is DLC. And if you don't want DLC, we don't have anything for you. No, we, right. we, we're not going to be that. We're going to give you everything. That's good. So, Armando, as you're sort of talking to customers, you're helping plan this journey, you're helping them traverse the biggest systems, bringing enterprise a little bit closer, out to the edge. What are a couple of the key recommendations you and your team are making to these enterprise customers in terms of kind of getting on the journey and partnering up with Dell? The number one thing we say is focus on the use case. Okay, what is the use case and what are you trying to accomplish and what is essentially the business results you want? We always start from there and then we work backwards, right? Uh, what we always try to do is, okay, how big is your use case? How big is your data set? You know, how many GPUs do you actually need? What is essentially your, your data center barriers that you need to essentially right. work against? And then from there, we'll work backwards and we'll build the right solution for you, right? The other big thing that we also try to do is we really try to hone in on the AI use case, right? So, hey, okay, what type of model do you need to actually use? Okay, hey, how big is your data set? Where is your data? Okay, is your data clean, cataloged, and tagged so you can actually go and do something with that data? And it's really breaking down those things because you know everybody has that great building block and that's what we do really, really well. But what we understand is you still have to have the model management and governments. You still have to have the data management, the data governance. You still essentially have to have the data production, right? You still have to have the right. security. And then, oh, by the way, those things all have to be interoperable with each other and they all have to communicate and they have to give you one single version of the truth. And that's where we're guiding our customers towards. Smart. Armando, I want to thank you so much for joining us here uh, at Dell Technologies World 2025. Let's have you back some time on the 6.5 um, and have a great event. Thank you very much. And it's a pleasure talking with you. Thank you. And thank you everybody for tuning into the 6.5. We're on the road here at Dell Technologies World 2025. We're going to step away for a few. Stick with us. <laughs>